Okay, I'm finally sitting down and I'm remaking this video. Uh, about a year ago, um, it got deleted off YouTube, and I got a strike on my channel for it. Um, so I kind of just haven't really sat down to like remake it. I assume it's because I showed a link in the video that I shouldn't have, but I'm not really sure why past that. Okay, so first of all, you don't need exactly this version of Dolphin 5.0. Um, in fact, I'm not even going to be using this version, but this is just the first version that supports it. So as long as you have 5.0 and then this number or larger, it works. Just make sure that everyone has the exact same version of Dolphin as well. And then over here is the GBA BIOS file you'll need. Depending on how you acquire the file, it might be a .bin, it might be a .bios, and the name might be a little bit different. It doesn't really matter, and you can use it for any GBA Dolphin game. It's not exclusively for Force Wars Adventures, so if you already have one, that works. It doesn't matter, just make sure everyone has one of them. Next, we're going to come over here into Dolphin. What you want to do is you want to go to Config up here. Um, paths. And make sure that you have a folder here for your ROMs, wherever you put it. Like maybe you can put it in your Dolphin folder, you can put it on a folder on your desktop, just wherever you do it. This is absolutely a required thing. You need a ROMs folder. Next, over in GameCube, you need a memory card in slot A, and you need slot B to be nothing and SP1 to be nothing. Um, and down here, under GBA settings and BIOS, um, you also, wherever you put that GBA.bin or .bios or whatever it's called, just that BIOS file that you hopefully have now, also needs a directory. Again, you can leave it anywhere you want. You can even leave it in ROMs if you wish, but you just need a exact directory to it. You need to click open on this so that it appears exactly right here. Also, in general, you probably should disable dual core because some GameCube games don't like it, and I think it can cause some desync. So, definitely just make sure that you have this disabled. And also, probably auto update should be disabled. I think it is like that by default, but it's just if you're going to be playing this online, you don't want to accidentally have your guys' games uh, or version numbers uh, desynchronized. Next up, we're going to go to the controllers tab. And everyone who is participating should go to port 1 under GameCube controllers and do GBA integrated. Um, I'm also going to be using port 2 um, just to show an example. And also if you're running two people on one machine in this netplay session. And I'm going to have my exact controls and settings in the description. For the video, I'm not going to go in depth because it really doesn't matter. Um, and if you're using WASD, it's very simple to set up. Once you have all that set up, you can go ahead and launch the game. This happens to be my layout. Um, I have my GBAs on the right and my main game on the left, um, acting as like the TV and the Game Boys. Um, however, you can move around these windows however you want. You can right click um, on these emulators, uh, on the GBAs, sorry, um, and make sure that they both say connected or however many you have. I'm gonna disconnect this one for now to show off how it looks, but also what you might encounter if you have some kind of issue going on. So I'm going to go over to the normal game, and I'm going to select my save file, and then go to two-player game. And two-player game, you'll see that player one is connected, and that is evident by it, it saying connected right here. Um, and then over here, this one says disconnected, and it's as simple as toggling that, and player two is in the game. And you can confirm, go in, and we will be... Oh, whoops, wrong button, sorry. We will be selecting just level one for now, just to show it off. I have player one on my WASD, um, or actually player, <laughs> both players actually um, have A and B mapped to the same thing, but I have player two on arrow keys and player one on WASD. So, you know, they can move independently, um, but as you can see, when player one goes in, player one is definitely on the Game Boy. Um, while player two is doing whatever they wish. Um, and if the sound is annoying, honestly, you can pretty much just mute the Game Boys. They, they work about the same anyway, and they can be very loud and very obnoxious. 
Okay, but that's basically it for the test. If you want to just play locally, honestly, you can stop right here. That's everything you need to know. But if you want to go online, that's what the next part's for. Okay, so as long as everyone has done everything up until this point, everyone should be good to go. So you want to go up to Tools and click Start Net Play. And this is where the first difference comes into play. The host will go to the Host tab, while everyone connecting um, will go to the Connecting tab. Um, you probably want to do Traversal Server because it should just work straight out of the box. Um, however, you can see use Direct Connection um, if you would rather use IP addresses and stuff. Um, using Traversal Server does not block using IP addresses though, so you can still give people your IP. Um, as well as if you're playing on LAN, I think the Traversal Server might have some issues, so you can give people on the same network as you your local IP address and they can still connect to you even if you don't want to use direct connection for everyone else. So as the host, you should go to the host tab and find Four Swords Adventures, because that's the game we're playing today. Um, and at the top, you can click Show in Server Browser if you want. Um, this is for doing public stuff. Um, that's if you were trying to host it like publicly. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it privately because I want to play with people I know. I shouldn't need to do anything else except for change my nickname. Um, you can make it whatever you want. It's not permanent, and it also doesn't affect the gameplay by any means whatsoever. Okay, so now that we're over here, um, this is my server, and you can see my room ID right here. This is the code that people will be using to connect, and I will show exactly how to do that in a second. I need to launch a second dolphin and a second net play because I'm limited by my one machine currently. Um, but you come over here to the connect page. Um, everyone should have their own nickname, just to make it clear who's who. Um, make sure they also have traversal server selected. Take that host code, put it here, and then click connect. Okay, so I'm not sure if it's because I'm on LAN or because I'm hosting two dolphins on the same machine, but I have to use direct connection instead of traversal server. Um, you can use this little drop down to reveal what port you're currently on. And then because I'm hosting on the same machine, I can just use local host. Um, but you would pull up the host would pull up a command prompt and type IP config. And you will find your local IPv4 right here. And you give that to other people on your network trying to connect to you. Um, but people online should be able to just use the traversal code. No problem. Okay, and once you have everyone connected, it's up to the host to fine-tune the rest of the settings. Uh, if you look up here under data, there's a few things you can click um, and check off and stuff. You should probably match your settings to mine, but it does depend on what you want to do. The top one, no save data, means that it will not use saving or loading at all. Every time you launch the game in this state, it will always use a new save file, um, at least for the session. Um, the middle option is load host save data only, um, which means that it can load um, a save provided from the host, but it won't write. Um, it'll last for the session, but you know, it won't be a new file anymore. And the third option is load and write host save data, which is probably the one you want to use because it will load a save provided from the host and it will also write a save um, to the host's machine. Um, which means that you can actually make progress and play across multiple sessions. Uh, we're not using the Wii data, so it doesn't matter. Sync AR and Gecko codes, um, you want to use if you're going to use any cheats. Um, I'm not, so I don't even bother. Um, and the bottom one, strict setting sync, is just for trying to synchronize certain settings in Dolphin that are a bit more volatile and might cause issues. So this just tries to minimize desyncs. If we move over to the network tab, um, we probably still want to match my settings. Fair input delay basically means that um, all players, including the host, um, are going to have the same amount of input lag. Um, this just, you know, it makes things fair. It, it's something that you would typically use for something like Mario Party or Mario Kart or something, so that everyone has the exact same amount of lag. Um, host input authority. I think basically means, uh, if I remember correctly, it will just try to use the minimum amount of input lag for everybody, which also means that the host is going to have no input delay. 
Um, if that's how you want to play, it's totally fine. I usually try to match so that we all experience the same thing. And then golf mode is irrelevant here. Um, uh, checksum is basically just making sure that you guys have like all the same files and stuff. You probably, in this case, only need to use current game because you're only trying to play this game, um, according to this tutorial anyway. Um, when you click it, something will appear on screen that basically just makes sure that certain data matches. Um, you can do the same thing with other games, or even see if your guys' SD card is matched, but the SD card is only relevant for Wii anyway, and other games are only relevant for other games that aren't Four Swords. Um, so you can do it just to make sure your guys' ROMs are matched, um, but if you guys are confident with it anyway, you, do, you can just skip this entirely. As for the final tab up top, we have three options. There's record inputs, show golf mode overlay, and hide remote GBAs. Record inputs only matters if you know you want to record all your inputs. I can't really see any practical reason for wanting to do this. The golf overlay, I don't know what it even does, but I don't think it pops up unless you're in golf mode in network anyway. Um, and the last one, hide remote GBAs, is something I can't really show you but I will try to draw some things to show what it does, because it's very cool. Um, it basically just depends how you want to play. So when you have the option disabled, this is more or less what your games are going to look like. Um, so if the top left is player 1, top right is player 2, and so on, everyone will see everyone's GBA as well as the normal TV screen. While the option is enabled, you will only see your own GBA. So as you can see, the green guy sees only the green GBA, the red guy sees only the red GBA, and so on. This final example is if you have multiple people on a singular machine. You will see both GBAs in this case because they aren't remote GBAs, they are local. Buffer's a bit finicky. You're going to have to fine-tune it yourself a little bit, but the general rule is that you combine the pings of all the players, and then you divide it by about 15, and that is roughly your buffer size under um, most cases. Uh, if you're playing with like lower-end systems or someone who has particularly bad internet, you're going to need to increase this buffer a bit, and if everyone's on very good machines um, with very good internet, then you can probably lower this buffer a little bit. Um, and keep in mind that one buffer is essentially one frame of um, input delay as well. Um, because I'm running both on my same machine, zero milliseconds, zero buffer. But if you're playing with four people, the host is going to have zero, and let's say the other three people have like 50, 60, and 70 ping. You add up all that together, you get 180, and then you divide that by 15. Um, and then you'll get, you know, about 11 or 12 buffer. Um, and again, you're going to have to fine-tune this yourself, but that is like the starting uh, value that you should try first. Now, the very last thing we need to do is assign controller ports. Uh, we click on that, and by default, the join order for the server will be on the ports. Um, however, sometimes this isn't always what you want. Um, we do want to check off all the GBAs and ignore the Wii remotes because we're not using a Wii. Um, and whoever you want player 1 to be, you put in GC port 1. Whoever you want player 2 to be, you put in GC port 2, etc. Um, however, the only real exception to this rule is if you want to run multiple people on one machine and other people online somewhere else. So in this case, I would probably be um, GC port 1 and GC port 2, while Ger Gerald over here would be GC port 3, so that I could have player 1 and player 2 on my machine, and player three over on someone else's machine. And uh, that should do it. Um, if you guys have any questions um, about anything that just doesn't seem to work for you guys, uh, just leave a comment. Um, I'll try to respond to it um, and favorite it. If I don't favorite your comment within like a couple days, just send another one, because it probably just means that YouTube didn't notify me about it, um, which did happen on my previous videos, including the one that got sniped by YouTube at some point. Um, I'll have a pinned comment that's just an FAQ. Thanks for watching. Hope they help people. And I'll uh, see you guys later.